we're going to talk about muzzle brakes and suppressors. One of the main reasons being of what is really entailed here, having a muzzle brake and a suppressor and a, a, a threaded thread protector for the barrel. Now what we've got here is a problem right from the very, very start. So you order a muzzle brake and you want a threaded thread protector and you want a threaded 5 8 24 the barrel provided the barrel is big enough so you can put a suppressor on it. Now I'm going to detail every aspect here. The rifle with the thread cap if it's sighted in with that threaded thread protector <coughs> Sighted in will have one impact on the paper. Now you take that off and you put a muzzle brake on it. Now you've got an entirely different impact on the paper, so your rifle is not sighted in now. Now your rifle has to be sighted in again because you put the muzzle brake on. And this applies to the same thing if it's sighted in with the muzzle brake and you take it off and you put the thread protector on, now the rifle's got to be recited. Now quite frankly, if I have a muzzle brake on a rifle, of any rifle of my own, I don't have a thread protector because the rifle hat is sighted in with a muzzle brake. There's muzzle brakes on there for a purpose. It's because I want a muzzle brake and I want to use the muzzle brake and I want an accurate rifle and I want to know where my rifle shoots. But everybody seems to think that because they read something that they got to have a thread protector. Right off the bat this compounds the situation. You have no accuracy problem if you sight it in and leave it sighted in the way that you sighted it in with the brake or the thread protector. Now we go even further. Now we got, everybody seems to think that they have to have a suppressor. There's not anything more unhandy on a rifle than a suppressor. It adds somewhere around 9, 10 inches, maybe more, to the length of the, length of the, of the rifle. Most of them are about an inch and three quarters in diameter, and they add something like a pound to a pound and a half to the end of the barrel. Now here we go again. You just took off your thread protector. Now you put on your muzzle brake. I put on your not your muzzle brake, but your your suppressor. Now your rifle is impact even different on the paper. You see, here's what it's about. You change the vibrational dynamics of the of the barrel. You add a weight to the end of the barrel or you subtract weight from the end of the barrel and now you change the sight in aspect of your rifle. Now how many of you have went through the trouble to see what the difference is on the paper at a hundred yards let alone at distance. Now you've got a suppressor well, we've got this extreme long range crowd that think that they can shoot game at three quarters of a mile or damn near a mile, and they've got a suppressor. But they've sighted in the rifle with their muzzle brake, and then they put their suppressor on. Now it's not sighted in at all, it's not impacting the same, and you're going to go out here and you're going to shoot at our majestic wildlife and, and wound it or completely miss it in one thing or another because you don't have the first clue that every one of these aspects that change, that, that, that change the impact of how your rifle was sighted in has any type of application. Anytime you change any of these situations it's going to change the impact your rifle. Now have you bothered to say 
put a target up at 500 yards or 1,000 yards and sight your rifle in with your suppressor and even see if you've even got accuracy, I'm going to tell you right now, it's quite possible that you don't have any accuracy at all. I'm not telling you that you can't in the instances have accuracy, but when you change a lot of these aspects, and suppressors are known to not have the ability to give you the ultimate accuracy aspect, you have no business out here shooting at anything that's living with this situation. So, this is how it is in a nutshell. You got people that, you know, just absolutely have to take a shot at an animal out there at extreme range and they've got a suppressor. They've just got their rifle not long ago from whoever they got it from and they have no practical knowledge of suppressors or really much of anything else really to do with hunting or else they wouldn't be trying to shoot at long distance or using a suppressor. If I wanted to, if I wanted to shoot at whatever long type of a distance, I always shoot my rifle to have an idea of how this rifle shoots at distance. I'm able to shoot to 850 yards from my bench here and I can check my rifle at various distances to see exactly where it impacts on maybe one or two days out of the year that are still enough to find that out. That there's no air current, that there's no wind, that there's no mirage or no poor light. There's only about two or possibly three days out of an entire year that this can be done. Quite frankly, I don't think you're going to bother to do that because you're more excited about going out here and shooting something at three quarters of a mile and, and, you know, bragging, bragging about it and one damn thing another. So, this is another thing that has just gotten completely out of hand with the hunting aspect of things and what takes it? What takes it in the, in the aspect of disrespect? It's this wildlife. If you want to shoot at targets, if you want to shoot at, at, at paper targets or you want to shoot at a steel steel target, that's all fine and dandy. But in every single aspect, whether you're using the thread protector, the muzzle brake, or the suppressor, you need to check it at the range that you expect to shoot at, the maximum range that you expect to shoot at, and if you don't have accuracy with a, with a, with a suppressor, you got no business shooting at anything with it if you don't have the, have the accuracy. It's just plain and simple.